Hi, my name is Humer Mandavia and I'm a Senior Technical Marketing Manager at Zukin. Today I want to introduce to you Zukin's multi-board system design environment called Design Force. Design Force is part of the CR8000 suite of tools for multi-board system level design using the latest hardware and software technology such as 64-bit architecture, multi-core, and multi-threading processing. It also uses the latest user interface such as the touchpad. The touchpad allows me to navigate my design and also access specific functions related to my task so when I work along with my mouse I can maximize my productivity and enhance my design experience by taking advantage of my free hand. As I utilize my mouse and touchpad, I can work on the design with dynamic editing, so that means with the use of the new user interface technology, I don't have to go to a menu or a toolbar for my common task to complete my design. With dynamic editing, I can route differential pairs automatically, and in this case I can route a broadside differential pair seamlessly between a 2D and 3D view. This makes it easier to route this type of differential pair because it requires the editing of multiple layers. In Design Force, I can manage all my high-speed needs in one environment. Let's take, for example, this differential pair. I can open up the constraint browser and see all the min-max links and timing constraints I have set for this. I can also manage constraints for my nets, extended nets, spacing classes, and components all within one environment. I can also use the constraint browser to automatically create my differential pairs. So based on various pairing rules, I can define which pairs to create, hit OK, and now back in the constraint browser, I can set the constraints for my differential pairs. Back in my design, if I want to modify the traces to meet my constraints, I can use tools such as LinkedIn to select the differential pair and auto-tune it to an accordion shape in this case, so it's meeting my design rules, and I can modify the shape dynamically, and once I'm happy with the pattern, I can say OK, and then we'll select the segment and say Send, and this will open up the Scenario Editor, which shows me a topology view, and you can see where there's a couple transmission lines. I'll next hit Simulate, and this will create the waveform for me so I can do some additional analysis from a signal integrity perspective. So as you can see here, you could do your constraint management and verification for high-speed design in one environment. I can also take into consideration other electrical requirements such as impedance control lines. If I had to modify the stack up, in other tools I'd have to go outside and run some type of batch operation. But in Design Force, I can do this dynamically in 3D right inside the design. So in this 3D view, you can see the components, traces, and vias, and if I need to start modifying the stack up to meet my electrical requirements, I could just select two layers here, and we'll say insert, and this will add a new layer, and I can also modify the thickness of that value, so I can achieve the impedance requirements on this design. In this case, if I had to make this for a strip line configuration, I could do this on the flyer right inside the tool. Because Design Force has a native 3D architecture, it makes it easy to work with cutting edge technology such as embedded components. Let's take in this example here, I'll select this component, and I want to move it down to a different layer, so I'll say layer 2. And as most tools, I get some kind of visual indicator letting me know that it's on a different layer. But in Design Force, I can select a component or a group of components and change the placement in a 3D view. So in this case, I'll take these components and I'll put them down to layer 3. This makes it very easy to work with embedded components, especially on high-dense designs. In this design, I also have an IC that I need to embed inside a cavity. So if I go navigate here, and you can see there's a height keep-out violation taking place, so I need to push this down on an inner layer. So let's select this component, and we'll push this down in 3D into layer 4. And you can also see where that component is now sitting inside a cavity. And at any point, I can always go back to a 3D view to visualize the component sitting inside the cavity. And I can also turn on XY cutting planes to simplify my view. But it also gives me an accurate representation of that component as it resides inside the stack up. And because Design Force is a system level design tool, I can do a multi board design as an example of backplane and multiple child cards. Or I can also do a chip package board co design. So in this example here, I have a SIP package with three stack dies and TSVs, and also a 3D representation of the solder bumps on the board. The tree view here on the left allows me to manage my project and also control the traceability of all the objects in my design. And when I'm ready to start doing my chip package board co-design, in this case I'll just grab the trace coming from the bond pad here and start routing it to the via that will then go down to the PCB. 
And at this point, I could do some other pin swaps and stuff to manage my IOs and also improve the routability of the design between the chip package and board. So as you can see, Design Force allows you to realize a true multi-board system level design in one environment. And because it takes advantage of the latest hardware and software technologies, the tool can support various client-server configuration, including cloud computing. For more information about Design Force, please visit our website at zookin.com and thank you for watching our video.